video, I'd like to talk about finding sides on a right triangle. As long as we know one angle and one side of a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and the trigonometric definitions to find the remaining sides. As a reminder for a right triangle with an acute angle theta, we define the functions relative to the angle theta. Sine theta is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine theta is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and tangent theta is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now, one really important note for this, if the calculator is set for degrees, then you must enter theta with degrees. If the calculator is set for radians, then you must enter theta using radians. So make sure you know what your calculator or Desmos is currently set for before you start doing calculations. Now, it's really useful to use A, B, and C to label missing sides of a right triangle. And if you do choose that convention, it's best to use C as the hypotenuse, since that's what the hypotenuse is in the Pythagorean theorem, and use A for the adjacent side, since adjacent begins with the letter A. That leaves you with side B to be the opposite side. In the right triangle below, we know one angle and one side. The triangle does not have a hypotenuse labeled, the base of the triangle is unlabeled, and the vertical side of the right angle is a length of six. The angle opposite the six is 25 degrees. Let's set up the three trigonometric relationships for the given angle of 25 degrees. The first thing I'm gonna do is label the missing sides of this triangle. So I have a hypotenuse that's unlabeled. I'm going to call that side C. The opposite side is 6. And the adjacent side is unlabeled. I'm going to call that side B. So referencing 25 degrees, the opposite side is 6. The adjacent side is B. And the hypotenuse is C. Let's write out sine 25 degrees, cosine 25 degrees, and tangent 25 degrees. Now because it's so important that you know whether you're putting radians or degrees into your calculator, you'll notice that I have kept the degrees symbol on all of those angles and that's to be absolutely certain I know that I have those in degrees. The sine of 25 degrees would be opposite of hypotenuse, in this case 6 over C. Cosine of 25 degrees would be adjacent over a hypotenuse, that would be B over C. And tangent 25 degrees would be opposite over adjacent, that's 6 over B. Now, which of those relationships are useful for finding the missing sides? Well, the one that's not very useful is cosine 25 degrees, and that's because we have two unknowns in that. We don't know B and we don't know C. So let's actually just cross this one out as being kind of not useful to us. Sine of 25 degrees is 6 over C, and we could solve for C in this relationship. Tangent of 25 degrees is 6 over B, and we could solve for B in this relationship. Let's go ahead and do that and find the remaining sides of this triangle. Looking at sine 25 degrees equals 6 over C, I could multiply both sides by C. That gives us C sine 25 degrees equals 6, and then if I divide both sides by sine of 25, C sine 25 over sine 25 is just C, and that tells me that C is 6 over the sine of 25 degrees. I can find the actual value for that going over to Desmos. I'm going to double check to see if I'm in degrees or radians, so I'm going to switch to degrees. And then I'll enter 6 divided by, go into the function menu and choose sine, and then 25. And the result is 14.197, or I'll round to 14.2. So C is about 14.2. So now I know the hypotenuse. Let's just solve the tangent equation as well to find the missing side B. It's good practice for us. So first, we're going to multiply both sides by B to get B out of the denominator. That leaves us with B tangent 25 degrees equals 6. And then we'll divide both sides by tangent of 25. 
So dividing by tangent of 25 on the left and dividing by tangent of 25 on the right. On the left, B tangent 25 over tangent 25 will just be B. And on the right-hand side, we have 6 over the tangent of 25 degrees. And again, we can jump over to Desmos. We know we are in degrees because we were just over there. And we can change this to 6 divided by the tangent of 25 degrees, which gives 12.867 or just 12.87. So B is approximately 12.87. Now, a good way to check to make sure we found our sides correctly is to make sure the Pythagorean theorem still holds. So our hypotenuse should be 14.2, our opposite side is 6, and our adjacent side is 12.87. So if this is all true, then 12.87 squared plus 6 squared should equal 14.2 squared. Let's jump over to Desmos and make sure. 12.87 squared plus 6 squared is 201.64. 14.2 squared is also 201.64. So this is a nice check for us that the sides do follow a Pythagorean theorem. All right, now I have a problem for you to try. I want you to find the missing sides in the right triangle below. This triangle has a vertical side, a horizontal side, and a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 15. The vertical side to the right angle is unmarked, and the horizontal side to the right angle is unmarked. The angle at the top of the triangle, that is the angle between the vertical side and the hypotenuse, is labeled with 7 pi over 20. And since we don't have a degree symbol there, we'll assume that 7 pi over 20 is in radians. Pause the video and see if you can find the missing sides in this right triangle. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. The first thing I would do would be to label the missing sides with both letters and the relationships to 7 pi over 20. In reference to the angle 7 pi over 20, the horizontal side is the opposite side of this triangle, and we'll label that with the letter B. The vertical side is the adjacent side of this right triangle, and we'll label that with letter A. And the hypotenuse we are given is 15. Now I'm going to set up sine, cosine, and tangent for 7 pi over 20. Sine of 7 pi over 20 would be opposite over hypotenuse, that's b over 15. Cosine of 7 pi over 20 would be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's a over 15. And tangent of 7 pi over 20 would be opposite over adjacent, which is b over a. Now, which of these relationships is useful to us and which are not? Well, we could solve the sine relationship for B, so that's useful. We could solve the cosine relationship for A, so that's useful. But the tangent relationship has both A and B in it, so we won't be able to solve for one or the other easily. So let's just cross that one out. Not useful for this problem. I'm going to go back up to the sine of 7 pi over 20 equals b over 15. And to solve for b, I'm going to multiply both sides by 15. So now I have 15 sine of 7 pi over 20 equals b over 15 times 15, which is just b. So b is 15 sine 7 pi over 20. Let's jump over to Desmos. Let's make sure that we're in radians, which we are. And we want to calculate 15 sine of 7 pi divided by 20, which gives us 13.365 or 13.37 as a side length. I'm going to mark that on the side as well. So we found one side. Let's find the next side using cosine. So we have cosine of 7 pi over 20 equals a over 15. Again, I'm going to multiply both sides by 15 which gives us 15 cosine 7 pi over 20 equals a over 15 times 15, which is just a. So now we need to find 15 cosine 7 pi over 20. 15 cosine 7 pi divided by 20. 6.809 or rounding 6.81. 
So A is approximately 6.81. Let's label that on the triangle as well. And to check, I'm just going to run the Pythagorean theorem to make sure that the relationship between the sides seems right. So I'm going to do 6.81 squared plus 13.37 squared equals 15 squared. 6.81 squared plus 13.37 squared is 225.133. I'm just going to round that to 0.13. And 15 squared is 225. So it's not exact, but remember we have done some rounding here. And 225.13 is close to 225. So with our rounding errors, we're probably okay there. If that ever worries you, you can go back to the side lengths and round to maybe three decimal places instead of two decimal places and make sure it comes out okay.